Hi there, and welcome to another modding lesson on the Iron Workshop. In this lesson, we'll learn how to create new traits for your civilization in Stellaris. Let's get started. Our first step in creating a new trait is to create our mod file. Now, I have a separate video for that because it tends to change from time to time. So the video you will be watching should be the most updated one. So if you don't know how to do that, go ahead, watch the video, create your mod file, and then proceed to step number two, creating our file and folder structure. In step number two, we will be creating our file and folder structure, basically putting all the files and folders required by our mod in order for it to work properly. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open two folders. The first folder that I'm going to open is the base Stellaris folder, the folder of the base game. And that one is located in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Stellaris. All right, so now that I have it open, I'm also going to open another folder and that is going to be the folder of my mod. Now that one can be located in Documents, Paradox Interactive, Stellaris mod. And in here you will see a folder by the name of the mod that you created in step number one. Now, my mod is called the Civ Trait mod, but your mod might be named differently. That really doesn't matter. Just go ahead and open that folder. All right. Now, inside of this folder, we will be creating some additional folders that will allow our mod to work. So the first folder that we need is the common folder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to recreate this folder inside of the folder of my mod, just like this. From inside the common folder, we need the traits folder. So I'm just going to go here. Inside of it, we have the traits folder. So again, I'm going to recreate this folder inside of my mod, just like this. And from here, we will be copying one of these files. Now to keep things simple, I'm going to use the species trait file, this one, because that file contains the template that we need in order to create our basic trait. So I'm going to copy it over here and I'm going to change the name of this file so that it doesn't overwrite the original file. So let's rename it to new traits. Now, if you plan to put traits here that are unique to your civilization, you can definitely uh, give it the name of your civilization as well. You can name it whatever you want. Just make sure not to put spaces. As you can see, all the files here have underscore used for spaces. And that is the best practice because spaces can sometimes cause issues. All right, so we need a couple more folders. Let's go back into the starting folder of my mod. I'll also go back to the Stellaris base folder, the starting folder of Stellaris. And from here, we will be copying the GFX folder, this one. So let's go ahead and create it as well. From inside the GFX folder, we will be creating the interface folder. So go ahead and create that one as well. Inside of the interface folder, there's a folder called icons. So let's create that one as well. And inside of this folder, there's a folder called traits. So let's go ahead and create that as well. And now finally, we reached the files that we need. Now from here, I'm just going to copy any of these files. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm only doing this to have a template so that my file has the same dimensions and the same format of the original file being used by Stellaris. So let's just take this one, the first file, doesn't really matter, and just put it in here. Later, we will be renaming this file, but for now, keep it as is. All right, let's again go back to the starting folder of our mod, go back to the starting folder of Stellaris. And the last folder that we need is the localization folder. It's this one right over here. So I'm just going to recreate it as well. And from here, I'm going to create the English folder because my localization is going to be for English. If your localization is for a different language, then obviously create the corresponding folder. So let's go ahead. And from here, I'm going to grab any of these files. Now, personally, I prefer to take the events L English file 
and I'm just going to put it in here and I am actually going to rename it now so we will rename it to new traits underscore l underscore english now in here you can give this file any name you want you don't have to call it new traits but it is very important to keep in mind that you have to keep the underscore l underscore english or the other language that you're using in order for your localization to work if you forget about this part and if you just call it for example new traits without the underscore l underscore english your localization may not work in the game well actually it will definitely not work in the game so be mindful of that and don't forget to put the proper suffix all right now let's go back to our main folder and we are basically done with step number two and we can now proceed to step number three in step number three we'll be creating our trait entry so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to open the folder of my mod I'm going to go to common traits new traits now it is possible that this file for you is not associated with notepad plus plus now if that happens you should be able to right click and select the edit with notepad plus plus option if you don't have it you should go to properties and then change the program that opens it to notepad plus plus and that should solve that so let's go ahead and open this file and see what we have in here so this file contains all the basic traits in the game and we're just going to be changing it a little bit i really don't want to go to very complex changes because what is important here is that you understand how to do the basic thing and once you understand that you can go crazy and start really changing things and making them interesting but that is not the purpose of this lesson so in here we have our first trait called trait agrarian and we're going to be changing this trait to our new trait now if you look here you see that it says trait agrarian equals an opening bracket and each opening bracket in stellaris and of course in other paradox mods and even in some programming languages has a corresponding closing brackets and that is how the game knows that this is the start of this trait and in here with this closing bracket is the end of this trait so what we need to do now is to clean up this file and remove all the other traits now since our trade begins here and ends here i'm just going to remove everything after this closing bracket so i'm going to put my mouse cursor in here i'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard i'm going to drag this all the way down to the end of the file i'm going to click here in the last line and press the delete key on my keyboard all right, so now all the other traits are gone and we can change this one. Now, for the purpose of this lesson, I'm just going to change it to something like a test trait, something like that. Next, we have something called cost. So this determines the cost of the trait. So once you select it, it will take two trait points and then obviously you will not be able to select uh, more traits. Of course, you can change this to one. You can even change it to three but it's best to stick between one and two points because that is how it is in the vanilla game next we have potential crossbreeding chance so some traits are unique some traits have special uh, mechanics like this one and you can keep it or you can just remove this line if you want whatever you choose to do it doesn't really matter again this is something for you to play around with next we have allowed archetypes biological and this means that this trait will be limited to biological races and you will not be able to use this trait for example in machine races right and next we have the modifier so this is basically the effect of this trait so what will this trait will actually uh, do and in this case it will give us planet jobs food production multiplier 0 0.15 and if you remember from the game it tells us that we will produce 15% more food from our farmer jobs and of course we can change this now there are two ways to change it you can either pick a modifier from another trait that already exists in the game and for example I can go here and open another traits file and just pick something that looks nice to me or you can actually pick traits from the Stellaris wiki that has a list of modifiers 
Now, I can guarantee you that all of the modifiers on that list will work, but most of them should work. Now, I have it open in here and I will have a link to this page in the description of this video. So go ahead and look for that if you need it. And let's say that, for example, I want to increase this with something that has to do with piracy. In here, we have something called piracy YX multiplier. So I can just copy this in here. I can put it in here. And this means that it will do something with piracy. But please note that you need to select if it will either cause a growth in piracy or a suppression of piracy. And you need to put it instead of the X here. This can be a bit confusing, but let's go with suppression. So I'm just going to call it piracy suppression multiplier. And I'm actually going to put it at one because from my testing, it doesn't seem to be working with values that are lower than one. All right, so we now have a different modifier. Now this is an additional effect to the trade. You can either keep it or you can remove it. For now, I'm just going to keep it. Doesn't really matter. Again, you can change it. You can put something else in here. It's really up to you. All right, so let's go ahead and save this thing. And our trade is actually already working. Uh, if I were to start my mod in the game right now, we would have a test trade but we would be missing two things. We would be missing the graphics and the localization. So let's move on to step number four, creating our trait icon. In step number four, we will be creating our trait icon. Now I will be creating this icon with a program called paint.net. If you don't have it, I'll have a link to the download of paint.net in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to open the folder of my mod. Let's go back to the first folder. Then I'll go to the GFX folder, interface, icons, trait. And the first thing that I want to do is to rename this file to fit the new trait that I created. So if we look here, we see that our trait is called test trait. So I'm just going to copy this name and I'm going to rename this file test trait. And now the game knows that this picture is associated with this trait. That is it. Now let's go ahead and open it in paint.net. I'm just going to grab this picture in here and drag it into paint.net, click open. And this is the image of our trait. Now I'm not going to put much effort into changing it. I'll just be changing it so that we can see a difference when we start the game. So let me just put some white, uh, some white stuff in here like this. All right. And this will be the picture of our trait. And now we can go to file, save. In here, don't change anything, just click on OK. And now our file is ready and we're basically done with step number four, creating our trait icon. Now let's proceed to the final step, creating our trait localization. In step number five, we will be creating our trait localization. So I'm going to open the main folder of my mod. I'm going to go to localization, English, new traits, L English. And the first thing that I want to do here is to clean up this file a little bit. So we will need to get rid of all the other stuff that's not relevant. Now, it is important to note that you have to keep the first line L English or L underscore the language that you're using because that tells the game that this file is used for that language. So you have to keep this line. I'm now going to uh, remove this empty space and I'm going to keep this line that says OK, but I'm going to remove everything below that line. So I'm going to put my cursor in here. I'm going to hold the Shift key, scroll all the way down and remove it. All right. Now we need to put in here the name of our trait or the ID of our trait. So our trait is called test trait. So let's go ahead and put it in here. I'm going to put it here with, where it says OK and the colon. This is where you put your code, the actual code of your traits in the localization. And then it says zero and OK in quotation marks. The text inside of the quotation marks is the actual localization. So I will just call it test trait. Excellent. 
But now I also want to create the description for my new trait. So I'm going to add a new line. I'm going to paste the name of my trait and I'm going to add the following underscore DESC, which is short for description. And I'm going to follow the same pattern we have in here. So colon zero quotation mark. And, and now let's put in the localization. For example, this trait is really, really great like that. And I'm going to close the quotation marks, which is very important. You will see that in all localization files, the localization starts with a quotation mark and ends with it. If you forget to put your quotation mark, then your localization may not appear. All right, now we can save this file and our trait is basically ready. We have all these steps done. So now let's go into the game and see how it looks. All right, so as you can see, we now have our test trade in here. Its cost is two points. We have our description. This trade is really, really great. And we have our piracy suppression modifier. So that is basically all you need to know about creating new traits for the various civilizations in Stellaris. If you have a question or if something didn't work for you, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like so that others can see it as well and learn how to create new traits in Stellaris. Subscribe to the channel to be notified on new videos when they are released. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.